بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلائق وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين صلوا على محمد وآل محمد I would first of all like to begin by thanking you all for coming out here Alhamdulillah this is the first in-person official Thursday night program that we are having we've been having for over a month now on Zoom and alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy and we are able to rent this hall out or this room and inshallah we will be announcing it will be either in this room or in another adjacent room close by a bigger one probably next week inshallah. So I thank you all for coming, for joining us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and inshallah we ask Allah to make it easy, just like Allah made this easy, to make it easy to acquire a permanent place, inshallah, that suits the needs of the whole community. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The 25th of the holy month of Rajab is the martyrdom anniversary of Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al-Kadhim alayhi salam, the seventh Imam of Ahlul Bayt. This great Imam who for th his Imam lasted for over 35 years. But a great portion of his Imam, a great portion of his life, he spent it in the dungeons of Baghdad and the dungeons of Basra. He was imprisoned by the Abbasi government. This great Imam who is name, one of his names is Babul Hawa'ij the door to the needs when people have needs you turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this great imam the seventh imam of ahlul bayt and all the imams are great but imam musa ibn ja'far alayhi salam he was poisoned and he passed away in the dungeons of baghdad while harun the caliph was in his palace he was the one who sent the poison to the imam alayhi salam while Harun was in his palace, the Imam alayhi salam, and his life ended in the dungeons of Baghdad. But today, today the king of Baghdad is Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. No one remembers Harun. Even though Harun was a king, even though Harun had the kingdom of the Islamic empire, the rule of the Islamic empire was under his rule, Today, people remember Imam Musa ibn Ja'far. From all over the world, people head to Kavamiyah in order to remember and say salam to Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. And yes, Imam al kadhim one of his names is Babu al Hawa'ij. And this is not only something that we, the followers of the Ahl al-Bayt, see. Al Imam al Shafi'i, the Shafi'i Imam. One of the Imams of the Sunni school of thought, Imam al-Shafi'i, he has a statement about Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. He says, In qabr, Musa ibn Ja'far tiryaqun mujarrab li ijabat dua He says the grave of Musa ibn Ja'far is an antidote that has been practiced and many people have experienced this for the dua to be answered. You go to the grave of Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. And similarly, we have a hadith from Imam al-Rida alayhi salam, where he tells one of his companions, one of his companions by the name of Zakaria ibn Adam. Zakaria ibn Adam was in Qom. He wanted to leave Qom and go to another city. So he writes a letter to Imam al-Rida. Imam al-Rida is in Mashhad, in Khurasan. He tells him, I want to leave. I don't want to stay here. Imam al rida writes a letter to him from Khurasan. He tells him, stay in Qom because Allah will protect the people of Qom because of you, 
because you're such a believer, you're such a pious person. Zakaria ibn Adam, he's one of the narrators of hadith. He tells him, stay, Allah will protect you and protect the people around you because of you, because you're a blessing, just like Allah protects the people of Baghdad by the grave of Musa ibn Ka'bah. This is the hadith of Imam al-Rida alayhi salam. And this shows us that there are some people, they are Mubarak. There are some people, they're a blessing for everyone around them. And the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt are surely from amongst those people and the top of the list of those people who are blessed and a blessing to everyone else. So this is why, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to strengthen our ties with the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt. A lot of us, we know about Imam Ali, we know about Imam Hussein. We don't know much about the other Imams. We don't know much about the biography, the life of the other Imams. And their lives are full of lessons for us. They're not individuals that lived 1400 years ago and we just read about them like we read any other person, the life of any other person in history. No, these are individuals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا They are Imams that guide by the order, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are appointed as divine guides for all of us. So we have to study their lives and we have to know about their lives. Today, some of us, we know more about the lives of actors and actresses and athletes. Some people could tell you exactly how many points LeBron James scored this year, right? Or they'll know exactly what's going on in politics. We know about all these individuals. Let us also know about the lives of our Imams. Let us know about the contributions and the legacy of our Imams. Now there are many, many lessons that we can take from the life of all of the Imams, especially Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. But one of the most important lessons, and we don't have time to talk about all of the lessons of the Imam. One of the most important ones is that the Imam alayhi salam teaches us that wherever you are, you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wherever you are. The connection with God is not limited to a time, to a place, to anything. See, right now we're gathered in this, they call it a band room. I didn't want to say the band room because now, alhamdulillah, it's a dua command room. So, anywhere you go, you could make it a place where you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You could remember Allah in your house. You could remember Allah in the masjid. You could remember Allah while you're driving. You could remember Allah anytime. In fact, we have a hadith, a person, he comes and he asks the imam. He tells him, is it rude if I remember Allah while I'm using the bathroom? Allah tells him, no. Use, the hadith says, remember Allah at all times. Don't limit it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in your heart. And the hadith Qudsi. Hadith Qudsi means this is a statement from God. The hadith says, لا تسعني أرضي وسمائي ولكن يسعني قلب عبدي المؤمن. Nothing can contain God. God is so great. Can you limit God? Can you place God in a room? You can't. But Allah says, nothing can contain me but the heart of the believer. I will go in the heart of the believer. Allah will enter into your heart if you allow Allah to enter. If you make room for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enter. And we learn from Imam Musa ibn Ja'far that anywhere you go, you could make that place a mosque. Anywhere you go, you could make that place a place of remembering Allah. They told him, you're going to be taken to the dungeons. They told him, you're going to be imprisoned. What does the imam say? He says, Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, thank you. Because, oh Allah, only you know that I used to ask you to give me the opportunity and the privacy to get closer to you. And now you have given me that. So I thank you for that. Where do you see someone? They tell him you're going to be in prison. And he says, thank you Allah. Because this is an opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. And we have to learn. We have to take advantage of every moment. And try to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Musa ibn Ja'far from a young age. He was known as the Abid, the Abid, the worshiper of Al Muhammad, Ar Rahib, the one who is always in the state of worship. 
Sahib is Sajda Tawila, the one who performed the long Sajda. In a hadith, it is said that one day Abu Hanifa, he comes to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Abu Hanifa was a student of Imam Sadiq, but sometimes he used to come and he used to act like he was the teacher as well. And he used to act like he knows a little bit. So he comes to the Imam and he tells him, Ya Aba Abdullah, I saw your son Musa. Imam al kazim was a young child. He said, I saw your son Musa. He was praying, but people were walking in front of him and he did not stop them. He did not stop them. Today, you know, in some of the madahib, in some of the sects, if someone is walking in front of you, they, you come and they, they try to stop someone from walking in front of them. We don't have that in, in our madhab. If someone walks in front of you, that's not going to make your salah batan. Yes, you have to be in a place where you can focus, where you can pay attention, but it doesn't make your salah void. So he tells him, your son Musa, he was praying, people were walking in front of him and he didn't do anything. He didn't move them. So Imam Sadiq, he says, bring me my son Musa. They call Imam Musa ibn Ja'far and he tells him, he says that you were, people were in front of you and you did not move them. So the Imam alayhi salam, he tells his father, Imam al kazim he says, Naam ya Abba. Yes, my dear father. The one who I'm praying to is closer to me than anyone who's passing by. And then he says, Allah says in the Quran, We are closer to you than your own juggler may. Meaning Allah is close to you. You can place Allah in your heart wherever and whenever, at any time, you can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Imam Sadiq, he smiled and he looks at his son and he tells him, May my father and mother be sacrificed for you, O holder of the secrets. Yes, this is Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. Imam al kazim there are many lessons, but I want to focus on the ibadah of the Imam. Although there are many lessons from the life of Imam Musa ibn Ja'far. One day, there is a, and this is also a hadith narrated by Abu al-Faraj ibn al-Jawzi al-Hanbali, a Hanbali scholar who died in 579 Hijr. So this is a story. It is narrated in Sunni and Shi'i schools. And the narrator is a, known mystic even in the sufi in the sufi scholars they know this person as a known mystic he, his name is shaqiq al-balkhi shaqiq al-balkhi he narrates the story he says one day in the year 149 after hijrah imam sadiq passes away in the year 148 after hijrah meaning one year into the imama of imam al-kazim salam imam al-kazim was 21 years old he was 21 years old. He says, Shaqiq al balqi he says, we gathered in Qadisiya in Iraq. And we were ready, the caravans were ready to go out to Hajj, to perform the Hajj. People, they would all get together, caravans, and they're ready to go to Hajj. At that time, if you want to go to Hajj, you have to bring your food with you. You have to bring the tents with you. You have to bring everything with you because you're traveling for two, three weeks. You're camping, you need everything with you. So Shaqiq al balqi he says the caravans were all gathered in that area, ready to move. And I said, Alhamdulillah, oh Allah, you see all these ibad, all these people. Let us attain, let us reach the Mecca and perform the Hajj. He says, as I looked, I saw a young man. He had dark skin, but he was very beautiful. He looked like a abid like a worshiper, and he was wearing a cloak, suf cloak, a wool cloak, and he has nothing with him except he's holding something to pray on in his hands, and he's wearing slippers. He said, I thought to myself, this guy is going to be with us. He wants to come to Hajj with us, and he wants to take from other people. He wants to come and, oh, I'm going to, give, you give me a place to stay. You give me food. You give me something. He's not bringing anything with him. He's going to just be bothering everyone else. He said, I put it in my mind. Let me go and tell him. Let me go and tell him off. Before 
before he comes and he bothers us throughout this journey, he wants to be Abid, but he wants to come and take it out on us where he's going to be taking from this person and that person. So he says, I go next to him. And as soon as I want to talk to him, he looked at me. He tells me, Ya Shaqiq, O Shaqiq, Ijtanibu kathiran min al-dhan inna ba'da dhanni if. Shaqiq, he says, how does he know my name? I was shocked. He said, he said that and he walked away. He said, I was shocked. First of all, he knows my name. And second, he knows what I was thinking. He tells me, Ijtanibu kathiran min al-dhan, stay away from it. He read a verse of the Quran. Stay away from doubt because sometimes assumptions and doubts is going to lead you to do haram. Sometimes if you don't know what's going on, you don't know what's going on in a person's life, don't make a judgment. Before you judge, go and try to see. He said, subhanAllah, he knows my name and he also knows what's in my heart. He said, I thought this person's from one, one of the awliya Allah and I did something wrong. He doesn't know who he is. So he said, I kept it in my mind that I want to apologize to him. So he said, the caravans move. The next stop, we reach the stop. And he said, I go to him. I see him. And once I see him, he looked at me. He tells me, Ya Shaqiq, wa inni laghaffarun liman taba wa amana wa amila saliha. Oh, and he recited the verse of the Quran I will forgive the one I will forgive the one who repents Shaqiq he said subhanallah once again he read my mind once again he knows that I want to repent and he read my mind once again he said and he walked away I didn't have the chance to talk to him he said in the next stop that we stopped, I saw him standing and worshiping and he was shaking in his ibadah, shaking while he was worshiping. And he prayed and prayed. And then he said, I saw him go next to the well of water. And he has the bucket and it's attached to a rope and he wants to bring out water. He said, as he brings down the bucket, the rope broke off and the bucket fell in the water. In the well, he said, I looked at him from far. He turned his hand to Allah and he says, Ilahi, oh Allah, Ilahi anta rabbi idha dhamittu min al -ma. Oh Allah, you are my Lord when I'm thirsty. Waquti idha aradtu ta'am. And you are my strength when I want food. Ilahi wa sayyidi ma li Oh Allah, I don't have anything other than this, so don't take it away from me. Shaqiq al-Balkhi, he said, Wallah, I saw the water of the well come up, 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 until the imam grabbed the bowl of water. He grabbed the bowl of the water. And then he said, I saw him, he drank from some of that water and he took something from the ground. He mixed it with that water and he drank from it. He said, I go to him. I tell him, please let me drink from that as well. Allow me to drink from that. So he said, he gave me the bowl of the water and he tells me, Ya Shaqiq, lam tazal ni'matullah alayna ahlal bayt sabira. O oh, Shaqiq, the blessings of Allah are continuous upon us. Wa iadih ladayna jameela. And Allah is very generous with us. Fa ahsin dhannaka bi rabbik. So have assumed the best in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is not going to leave you. You think God's going to leave you? If you're worshipping, if you want to do something good, if you have a good cause, you think Allah is going to leave you? No, Allah is not going to leave you. All that you need to do is change your attitude and have good intentions and accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything you want to do, Allah will do it for you. You think Allah is going to leave you hungry one day? You think Allah is going to leave you suffering one day? Allah is always going to be there for you. All you have to do is have good Dhan in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't assume the worst in Allah. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will be there for you. It says, فَأَحْسِنْ ظَنَّكَ بِرَبِّكْ فَإِلَّهُ إِنَّهُ لَا يُضِيعُ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ بِهِ ظَنَّهُ لَا يُضَيْعُ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ بِهِ ظَنَّهُ Allah is not going to leave the one who says, no, I have faith in Allah. I have faith that Allah is not going to leave you. 
He said, I drank from that. It was something that was so tasty and so good that I didn't feel the need for food for a few days. But I still don't know who this man is. He said, we reached Mecca and we performed the A'mal. Suddenly I saw this man once again. But this time there are people gathered around him and they're asking him questions and he's giving out money and he's, he's, he's a very different person. He was a nobody in the caravan. Now everyone knows him. He said, I asked about him. Who is this person? They tell me, Hada Ali Muhammad. This is the scholar of Al Muhammad. Hada Musa ibn Ja'far. This is Musa ibn Ja'far. My dear brothers and sisters, a man like Musa ibn Ja'far was placed in the prison. This is the injustice that the Imams السلام, have faced. But the Imam السلام, was not only a person, a lot of times when we remember the Imam, we just associate him with a person being in prison. No, the Imam السلام, was more, much more than that. The Imam led the Ummah. The Imam led the Shia. And the Shias were in the hundreds of thousands, more probably in the millions of that time, the followers of the Ahl al-Bayt. The Imam used to lead them. While he was in home and while he was in, in the prisons, he used to lead the ummah. This is how the imams, they were, they were appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The imam was in prison and the minister, the highest minister of the government of Harun, a man by the name of Ali ibn Yaqteen. Ali ibn Yaqteen was the finance minister, the highest minister in the government of Harun. He was from the followers of the imam. And the imam used to write letters. The system of wakala started with the imam al-Kadham. The system of wakala, where the imam, alayhi salam, he would appoint one person. And that person, he would go to the Shias. And he would deliver the message of the imam to the Shia. And when they had questions, they would ask that person. And he would come and ask the imam. One day, Ali ibn Yaqteen, he writes a letter to the imam. He tells him... Teach me how to perform the wudu. How should I perform the wudu? The Imam alayhi salam, he writes to him in a letter. He tells him, you perform the wudu by washing your face and washing your hands and washing your head and washing your feet. This is whose way of doing wudu? Who does wudu like this? Not the Shia. This is not the Shia way of doing wudu. The Shia way is wiping the head and wiping the feet. The Imam alayhi salam, he tells him, you wash your head and you wash your feet. Ali ibn Yaqeen was an ob obedient servant. That's it. He received a letter from the Imam. His master is telling him, you do wudu this way. He starts doing wudu that way. He does wudu. Ali ibn Yaqeen has no clue. But the government at that time, there were ministers in the government. They go to Harun. They tell him, Ali ibn Yaqeen is a Shia, he's a Rafidi. And you have him in your government, he's a Rafidi. So Harun, he didn't believe him, but he said, I'm going to go and see how he does wudu. If he does wudu in the Shi'i way, then that means he's a Shi'i. But if he does wudu the other way, then that means, no, I should trust him. So Harun, he goes and he hides behind the door and he sees Ali ibn Yaqeen doing wudu the way the Imam instructed him to do it. Once the danger was removed, the Imam writes a letter to him. He tells him, do wudu in this way. You wash your face and you wash your hands and then you wipe your head. Because the Quran says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, idha qumtum ila salah, fakhsulu wujuhakum. Wash your face, wa'idikum ila al-marafiq. He tells him from the elbow and down, not this way, from the elbow and down, you wash it. And then he tells him, wamsahu. The Quran says that the Quran is very clear. And wipe a part of your head, not your whole head. And then he says, and wipe your feet as well. So Ali ibn Yaqtin, he goes back and then he finds out that the Imam was protecting his life. This is Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. Now, the Imam alayhi salam, because Harun was very jealous, Harun couldn't tolerate that there was someone that was loved more than him. There was someone that people cared for more than him. And 
He was jealous. He was insecure, even though he had power. He had authority, but he would take the imam and he would place him in the prison. And of course, there were several caliphs. There was Al-Hadi, Al-Abbasi, Al-Mahdi, Al-Abbasi. Mansur was before them. And then Harun and the Imam alayhi salam was poisoned during the reign of Harun. In his last days, the Imam alayhi salam was under a very difficult prison. Because the Imam, he would be taken from one prison to another prison. And at that time, they didn't have a prison system like you have right now. It was in the houses of some of the ministers in the government. Someone in the government, he would come and he would tell him, place this person in your house. So the Imam alayhi salam first, he was in the home of Isa ibn Ja'far in Basra. He was taken from Medina all the way to Basra. And Harun, he tells him, I want you to torture Musa ibn Ja'far. Isa ibn Ja'far, he says, I can't. He's the grandson of the prophet. I can't do such a thing. And then he takes him, he transfers him to the prison of Al-Fadl ibn Rabi'a. Al-Fadl ibn Rabi'a, he says one day, Harun, he came to visit. And I tell him, you know, the one that you have imprisoned in my home, let me come and show him to you. He says, we were standing on the roof of the house and deep inside we could see the garden. We could see the place where the Imam alayhi salam was kept. He tells Harun, he tells him, do you see that piece of cloth? Do you see that blackness on the ground in the middle of the garden? He tells him, yes, I see that. He says, what is that? He says, that's a piece of cloth on the ground. He tells him, that's not a piece of cloth on the ground. That's Musa ibn Ja'far doing sujood. That is Musa ibn Ja'far in the state of sujood. He's like that. He says he's like that the whole time. The whole time he's in the state of sujood. He, he prays and then he goes in the state of sujood from, from day until night. From night until day and he's fasting and he rests very little. Then he takes him out. He places him in the prison of Al-Fadl ibn Yahya, who respects the Imam. So he sends him to the final and the most cruel and wicked of the prisons. And that is a man by the name of Sindi ibn Shahik, who used to torture the Imam. He used to harass the Imam. He used to abuse the Imam. And the Hadith says that this time the prison was not like any other prisons. This time it was a a hole in the ground, a hole in the ground that the imam could not even move, could not tell from day or night because it was covered. And the only way he would be able to tell of the prayer time is when he hears the adhan. One hadith it says that towards the life, the end of the life of the imam, they wanted to harass him even more. They started playing music outside outside the dungeon, then the Imam, he saw that his worship was being interrupted. So he asked Allah to take his life. This is one of the hadith that says why the Imam alayhi salam saw that he could not bear the dungeons of Harun. And he would pray, he would say, Ilahi khallisni min sijni Harun. Oh Allah, save me from the dungeons of Harun. My dear brothers and sisters, there are several ahadith that we have from the Imam. I'll say one for the barakah, where the Imam alayhi salam, he says, nas fi arba. He says, I saw that the knowledge of people could be divided into four things. There are four important things that you have to know. Nas fi arba. The first, awwalaha an ta'ruf rabbak. The first, you have to know your Lord. Know your Lord. Every single one of us, we need to know who our Lord is. We need to know who our creator is. We need to know who the one who has given us everything that we have. Second, you need to know what your Lord did to you. Your Lord is the one who created you. He's the one who gave you everything that you have. He's the one who's given all the blessings to you. Third, you need to know what your Lord expects from you. What does Allah expect from me? He's the one who created me. He's my Lord. He's the one who gave me everything he has, everything I have. Now, what does he expect from me? And the fourth is you need to know what takes you out of your religion. 
so that you stay in the religion, so that you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are the sincere followers of Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. Those who get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever we may be. And we ask Allah to grant us the ziyarah and the shafa'ah of this great Imam. For your blessings, for the blessings of the marhumin from your family and for the marhumin of all of the families and especially for those who have sponsored tonight's program, the marhumin of their family and the, the Fatiha for the soul, the souls of Sayyid Askari Hussein Zaki Musawi, Sayyid Radhi Musawi, Mir Asad Ali Musawi, Sayyid Bakr Musawi, and also today a great community leader was buried today, and that is Hajawanda Fayez. As well, let us recite Surah Al Mubarakat Al Fatiha for the souls of those who are mentioned. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Can you put the ziyara on the Zoom? Okay, then just leave it. We'll, we'll recite the ziyara, inshallah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We'll recite ziyara to Imam Hussein and we will end there, inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا وارث آدم صفوة الله السلام عليك يا وارث نوح النبي الله السلام عليك يا وارث إبراهيم خليل الله السلام عليك يا وارث موسى كريم الله السلام عليك يا وارث عيسى روح الله السلام عليك يا وارث محمد حبيب الله السلام عليك يا وارث أمير المؤمنين عليه السلام السلام عليك يا ابن محمد المصطفى السلام عليك يا ابن علي المرتضى السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء السلام عليك يا ابن خديجة الكبرى السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره والوتر الموتور أشهد أنك قد أقمت الصلاة وآتيت الزكاة وأمرت بالمعروف ونهيت عن المنكر وأطعت الله ورسوله حتى أتاك اليقين فلعن الله أمة قتلتك ولعن الله أمة ظلمت ولعن الله أمة سمعت بذلك فرضيت به يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله أشهد أنك كنت نورا في الأصلاب الشامخة والأرحام المطهرة لم تنجسك الجاهلية بأنجاسها ولم تلبسك من مدلهمات ثيابها وأشهد أنك من دعائم الدين وأركان المؤمنين وأشهد أنك الإمام البر التقي الرضي الزكي الهادي المهدي وأشهد أن الأئمة من ولدك كلمة التقوى وأعلام الهدى والعروة الوثقى والحجة على أهل الدنيا وأشهد الله وملائكته وأنبياءه ورسله أني بكم مؤمن وبيابكم موقن بشرائع ديني وخواتيم عملي وقلبي لقلبكم سلم وأمري لأمركم متبع صلوات الله عليكم وعلى أرواحكم وعلى أجسادكم وعلى أجسامكم وعلى شاهدكم وعلى غائبكم وعلى ظاهركم وعلى باطنكم بأبي أنت أمي يا ابن رسول الله بأبي أنت أمي يا أبا عبد الله لقد عظمت الرزية وجلت المصيبة بك علينا وعلى جميع أهل السماوات والأرض فلعن الله أمة أسرجت وألجمت وتهيأت لقتالك يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله زرتك من بعيد أسأل الله بالشأن الذي لك عنده وبالمحل الذي لك لديه 
أن يصلي على محمد وآل محمد ويجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة السلام على علي بن الحسين السلام على أصحاب الحسين السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام على فاطمة الزهراء السلام على الحسن والحسين السلام على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلوات